Hey, what's up hikers? I'm Bigfoot. Today, I'm gonna do a comparison of what most consider to be the best ultralight sleeping pad out there on the market. That's the Thermarest Neo Air x Lite. But instead of comparing this to another leading competitor, we're gonna compare it to itself. We're gonna compare the regular version to the short version. What are the key differences? What do you gain or lose between both? So if you're out there on the market to purchase one, you are armed with the facts to make the best purchase that suits you. Well, as you can see here, I got both of the pads laid out here and I'm gonna blow them up and start my comparison. The first noticeable thing obviously is the length of both of the pads. The short version is just over two feet shorter than the regular version will be a deal breaker for a lot of people. I always thought it was going to be a deal breaker for me because I didn't know how I'd sleep on basically a torso pad. So I want to talk about that, but let's blow these things up first. Now, because this is a air mattress, it's not a self-inflating air mattress, uh, both of these pads, you have to blow them up with your mouth. The problem with that is you get moisture inside of these things and eventually over time, could lead to mold on the Appalachian Trail. I blew this thing up every single night for 100 days, and I can see, I believe, some mold that is actually starting to grow. There's uh, some black, uh, brownish tint that I can kind of see inside of the baffles. So that is an issue that, uh, that you will have with these kind of pads any pad really that is not self-inflating. Now there's options out there that you can do that will avoid getting mold inside of your pads. A couple of the options are gear that they actually make for this. They can go out there and buy. And there's also do-it-yourself options. So the first thing that I wanna show you is a pad that they make, Thermarest makes. It's actually made for this specific model. It's uh, the NeoAir X Lite Thermarest pump sack. And what's nice about this thing, I did a review on this. I'll put it in the description box below. But not only does this dual as a pump sack, but it also can be a pack liner for inside your pack. And it also can act as a camp chair. I'm not gonna show all of that today. I did that in another video. So again, check that video out. So first, let's go ahead and let's blow up the larger air mattresses. Now, obviously, a big difference from a regular to the short version is you have a lot more that you have to blow up when you go from a regular to, to a short. So that does make a big difference. And I'll tell you, on the trail, it really got old blowing up my regular air mattress every single night. That's one. That's two. All right, so basically about two and a half of these things was able to get me to fill this entire thing up and uh, probably took me about 45 seconds. So again, this is your first option, which again, I like the multi-functionality that you have with uh, something like this. It is made of nylon, by the way. Now another option that Thermarest makes is a mini air pump. This is ran off of two AAA batteries, comes in at 2.6 ounces with the batteries. Without the batteries, it's 1.8 ounces. What's nice about this is you basically can set and forget it. So open this up, it's gonna start the air pump. You put the rubber nozzle, you pull the rubber nozzle out and you're gonna put it right over the blow valve. And then over time, it's going to blow up your air mattress. Now, uh, typically, you know, it's gonna take probably uh, two to five minutes, depending on which air mattress that you're blowing up. I think when I timed this thing on the short version, it was just over two minutes. But what's nice is when you get into camp and you're tired and you uh, are in the middle of setting up camp, you can go ahead and, and put this thing on your blow valve and go and do other things while this is blowing up your air mattress. It can't over inflate your air mattress. If it does, it's just going to push the air right back out. So I have both air mattresses blown up here and let's talk a little bit about the sizes and dimensions here first. So for the short version, the manufacturer states that the pad is 47 inches in length and uh, I probably get right around 47. Both pads are 20 inches in width. 
which at the widest part, I am getting 20 inches. Now, the lower you go down, let's just say at the torso level, it's uh, about 15, 15 and a half inches. And then both pads are 2.5 inches in thickness, which is what I am getting. Now for the regular pad, obviously it's going to be much longer. It comes in at 72 inches, which is right what I'm getting. So the regular version is 25 inches in length longer than the short version. The width of this thing, again, is 20 inches. And when you get down to your torso where the short version was 15 inches, this is still 19 inches. It is going to be wider on the torso area and down to the bottom of your legs. And then of course the thickness of this is right at two and a half inches, which is what the manufacturer states. So basically the regular version is 25 inches in length longer. And when you get down to the torso area, the regular version is about four inches wider than the short version in that same location. Now throw them on top of each other and you get a chance to kind of see what they look like with both of the pads kind of just up against each other. You can see how much longer that regular pad is. I actually get about 26 inches in length longer on the regular version. So let's look at the comfortability level when you're actually sleeping. Now both these pads are made with the same materials. They are both 2.5 inches in thickness. There are two baffles in both of these pads. They have a bottom baffle, which deflects the cold, and it has a upper baffle, which is going to, to reflect your body heat and keep you warm. The R value of these pads are 3.2, which basically means they are a three season pad, a very warm three season pad. So in terms of material and how it does with deflecting the heat and keeping you warm, both of them are gonna work out very, very well. Both of them are gonna work out very similar uh, from your torso up. Now I actually went with the short version on my last hike and I was really impressed with how comfortable and how well I slept. So most hikers are going to have some sort of butt pad. I use the Thermarest Z Seat. I brought this with me on the Appalachian Trail, but uh, almost every single hiker, once they get you know a few hundred miles in, if they didn't have a butt pad, they're going to have a butt pad. So I use this for my lower body when I slept on this thing and wanted to kind of demonstrate what this looks like. I am five foot eight, so just to give you guys an idea. And this is basically what it's going to look like as you're sleeping. You know, you don't have a ton of extra space here uh, below your torso, but you really don't need it either. Uh, in the upper part here, again, it's 20 inches. If, uh, if you're used to really wide pads, uh, this pad, 20 inches, is, is not a ton of extra width. If you go up to the longer version, it actually extends up to 25 inches. So the long version is 25 inches wide instead of 20 inches wide like the regular and the short version. But I actually slept on this thing really, really well. I was comfortable. I'm not so much a side sleeper, I'm more of a back sleeper. And uh, I actually didn't really even miss having the extra length of the regular pad. Now, with the regular pad, of course, I definitely slept really comfortably on, on this pad. And I would, I would say that, you know, you really can't go wrong, you know, with going with the short version and the regular version. Now, if both of these pads weighed the same amount, I would go with the regular pad. But when we talk about weight and the difference between the two, that's where the argument of which one to buy is really compelling. Now let's look at weight, as we know that's probably one of the biggest deciding factors, as well as the performance of the pad. So the regular version, the manufacturer states that it comes in at 12 ounces. On my scale, I come in at a total of 12.2 ounces for the regular pad. Now, going down to the shorter version, Manufacturer states that it comes in at eight ounces, whereas mine actually comes quite a bit below that by almost an ounce. So my scale comes in at 7.1 ounces. So almost half the weight going from the regular pad to the short pad. Now let's look at pack size. With the short and the regular version, 
being the exact same width, both of them are going to sit just as tall. They both have a width of 20 inches and just kind of what they look like standing up against a can of soda. Now, I have my one liter bot heater and wanted to show you the pack size of each of the x light pads and I'm gonna put it inside of the bot. Now to do this, I'm putting a rubber band around each of the x lights just so that they're as compact as possible. So here is the short version. It has a pack size of nine by 3.3 inches. So inside of my bot, you know, have quite a bit of room to uh, still wiggle there. Now the regular version has a pack size of nine by four inches. So nine by four inches versus nine by 3.3 inches. So as you can see here, it's a lot more snug inside of my one liter bot. I uh, can stick a finger in here around, but it is bigger by 0.7 inches in total pack size, as you can see here. Well guys, to wrap it up, it really comes down to your personal preference. I showed you the dimensions, how both of the pads are made, and really the biggest differences when you compare the two from each other. One thing to note as well that many people complain about is just how noisy these pads are. And you know, when you're going with the material that they make with this thing to really reduce the weight, but to also have the uh, components to be able to really deflect your, your heat back to you and keep you warm, uh, the material they use is really crunchy. And a lot of folks say that when they turn around at night, other people can hear hear you or they hear themselves and, and sometimes it's hard to uh, uh, get back to sleep. I personally have never experienced that. I don't sleep in shelters, so I didn't really have people complain. I, I think there was actually one shelter in the very beginning that I did sleep in and someone mentioned something about the noise, but it was more, I believe, on my uh, Z-Pax pillow that I had, the uh, stuff stack pillow, than it was the actual Thermos x Lite pad. But, but again, it really depends on your preference, but I'll tell you, for me personally, on the John Muir Trail, I'm bringing the shorter version for almost half the weight. Again, 12.2 ounces on the regular to 7.1 on my scale. Almost half the weight, and I'm getting almost the same comfortability level uh, that I'm getting with the short version. To me, just makes it worth it. So. That's what I'm choosing, but again, for you guys, it might be a little bit differently. Another nice benefit that you have with the short version, it's 30 bucks cheaper, or sometimes even more. So check out pricing on it uh, for cheaper, less weight. Uh, that just made a better decision for me. So that wraps up my video, guys. I'm really curious as to what you guys think about this topic. Do you support the regular version or the short version? Or if you have a different pad out there that you really love, what is it? Is it an ultralight pad? Why do you like it? If you guys found this video valuable, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Stay tuned for many more Bigfoot sightings and remember to always follow Bigfoot.